At the Indiana Alcohol Research Center, a lot of our research uh, deals with the risks for developing alcoholism. And we've known for a long time that uh, many drugs of abuse act directly on dopamine receptors in the brain. In this study, specifically what we looked at, we had two questions in mind. One was, can we measure uh, a dopamine release in an awake human? Uh, as the result of not alcohol intoxication, not the effect of alcohol pharmacologically, but simply the taste of, of their favorite alcoholic drink. And then the other question that we had was, is this a response that differs according to one's family history of alcoholism? That is, is there possibly some genetic component to this dopamine response in the brain? But it's also been clear over the last uh, couple of decades in animals that it's not just the drugs of abuse that themselves that provoke dopamine transmission in the brain striatum, but it's also things that um, are related to alcohol intoxication, uh, things that routinely go along with it. So the sight of a, of a bar, the sight of the glass, the smell of the beverage. Many neuroscientists believe that dopamine it plays a, a critical role in uh, creating urges that develop, that are, are, are stoked by uh, smells and tastes of, of rewarding stimuli. With a technique that we have here, positron emission tomography, we can radio label a drug that binds to dopamine receptors in the brain and then measure changes in the level of dopamine as the result of transmission that happens uh, uh, within uh, the brain as people are, in this case, in this experiment, tasting their uh, favorite beer. We were specifically interested in the brain's response to the flavor of a preferred beer. In order to use a, a, an appetitive control, we used Gatorade. Okay. And the flavors were, were delivered with a computer-controlled uh, machine that sprayed the flavors directly into the subject's mouth. And then the subjects would answer questions during the scan about their uh, state of whether or not they wanted more beer, whether they craved beer, how pleasant the flavors were, etc. The amount of beer delivered was small, and the low concentration of alcohol in beer allows us to deliver the flavor, so the stimulus properties, the flavor properties, without the subject becoming intoxicated. As we expected, the taste of beer alone would be uh, sufficient to uh, stoke someone's desire for more beer, increase their cravings. Um, but also, the second finding is what we believe to be, for the first time, the demonstration that in humans, uh, the, just the flavor of beer alone absent any significant effect from alcohol as a drug was enough to increase uh, dopaminergic transmission in the brain's ventral striatum, the brain's, uh, one of the brain's major reward centers. And finally, what we think is perhaps one of the most significant findings is that this dopaminergic effect from beer taste alone was driven primarily by the subjects in whom there was a significant family history of alcoholism. So we think the findings of the study are, are significant in a couple of different ways. First, uh, I should note that uh, a family history of alcoholism remains the best proxy that we have uh, for studying alcoholism genetic risk, in particular because there's no one gene that's likely to be discovered uh, that is related to alcoholism or that causes alcoholism. Rather, it's much more likely that there are pools of genes, many genes, that confer different kinds of risk. And the data that we have here suggest that one of the ways in which this genetic risk might work is to sensitize the brain's reward systems and sensitize dopamine transmission in the brain's ventral striatum in a way that perhaps heightens the association between drug cues and uh, drug intoxication, alcohol intoxication. And finally, I think the, the data do uh, help address the significant question that alcoholism isn't just a defect of personality or of, of, of behavior alone, that in the end, it really is a disease of the brain that affects brain neurochemistry before uh, uh, one necessarily develops the alcohol dependence itself.